Let's get started with our second talk and learn about new technological advances in plant identification. And here to show us how they work and maybe how they don't work is Dr. Esther McGinnis. Esther is an extension horticulturist. She's the director of the NDSU Extension Master Gardener Program, and she's an associate professor within the Department of Plant Sciences. She and her graduate students conduct research on pollinator attraction, plants that can take cyclical saturation and drought, as well as native plants. And before coming to NDSU, Esther taught herbaceous plant identification to horticulture and landscape architecture students at the University of Minnesota. So Esther, welcome to the forums. All right, thank you very much. And we're gonna totally shift gears here from pollinator plants to using your cell phone and using those apps to identify plants. And in the title, you'll notice that it says round two. About five, six years ago, I did kind of a similar evaluation of cell phone apps to see just how accurate they were at identifying plants. And I have to tell you, I was not impressed at all you know, th that many years ago. In fact, I deleted the apps right off of my phone because I didn't think that they were very good. Well, um, we've got a new crop of cell phone apps that we are going to look at. But before we get there, I'm going to tell you how things were in the old days. I guess I'm middle-aged, so I can say it's the old days. As Tom mentioned, I used to teach plant ID to horticulture students and to landscape architecture students. And it was a difficult class because in order to identify plants, we had to learn family characteristics. We had to learn characteristics of genus, uh, of genera, and then even down to species. And that involved being very proficient in the vocabulary. So you had to be able to look at different characteristics when you dissected a flower or looked at the leaf and had to have the vocabulary to describe that. Here, I just have some of the vocabulary for describing different stamens. So as you can see, there was, there was a lot of terminology to learn. And can you imagine the terminology for describing leaves with all the different shapes and the serrations. I have to admit, I flunked a few students. I mean, it was a lot to memorize. Now, fortunately, we do have some new cell phone apps out there. And these are five of the more common apps and they all use image recognition. So a novice would be able to do this. Um, I looked at five apps and I have to admit, I just did this this past weekend. I downloaded five apps and for fair disclosure, I have an iPhone 8. So an ancient cell phone, um, but these, these all worked on my, on my cell phone and um, I'll go through the apps. iNaturalist, um, this was a joint venture between the California Academy of Sciences and the uh, National uh, uh, and, and Nat Geo. Um, we've got PlantNet, which is a citizen science project, and this is on a global basis. So it's cataloging, you know, plant diversity. Um, so in addition to that, we have two apps that are not associated with, you know, science agencies or with National Geographic. Um, we've got PlantSnap and Picture This, and they're more like a commercial app. And um, PlantSnap was the only app that required me to create an account and even put a credit card on file once the free trial ended. There's Picture This. And in addition to plant identification, um, it has an online plant encyclopedia. And then the fifth app that I evaluated was Seek. And Seek is supposed to be affiliated with iNaturalist. So how did I do this? Well, I, I tested this on 17 different plants. Considering this is winter time, I had to use photos of those plants. So fortunately, I've got a huge photo library um, and, and was able to use that. I started off with kind of a, a, a softball, um, Monarda punctata, spotted bee balm. And this is a native plant. It's actually a, quite a good pollinator plant. But I used this one because I had a good picture of it. And number two, it's very distinctive in its coloration. So you'll see that it has bracts underneath the flowers that are kind of in white, yellow, or white, cream, and pink. So I thought that would be an easy first one to try. And then I tried this with all five of the apps. So I used my cell phone, you know, focused on the picture and then identified them. 
uh, I gave points based on how well they did. If they got the genus right, I gave them half a point. If they got the specific epithet, or I'm going to shorten that to species right, then I gave them another half point. So for each correct identification, they could get a, a total of one point. Um, now, as to be expected, four of the five apps did very well on spotted bee balm with it being so very distinctive. However, iNaturalist was out in left field. It thought it was cannabis uh, sativa. So it thought it was marijuana. Now, next up, I wanted to do something that was a little bit harder. Um, I chose uh, Monarda Didyma Grand Parade. And this, this is a harder picture to use because instead of being able to see the leaves, all you can see are the flowers. And I, I wanted to see if that had an effect. Well, um, as you can see, um, mon or plant net, uh, plant snap, and seek were all wrong. They, they didn't even get the genus right. However, iNaturalist, it said it wasn't confident in its uh, identification, but it did give a suggestion. It suggested that Monarda fistulosa was the name of this plant. And so this means it got the genus right, but not the species. So I gave it half a point for that. And then picture this, also thought this was Monarda fistulosa. Um, and so they earned half a point. Now, I have to admit, I'm not exactly um, disappointed in the app because this was a really tough picture to identify since the leaves were not showing. This is Aurelia cordata sun king. This is the perennial plant association plant of the year for 2020. And this is a kind of a hard plant to identify, I thought, for the app because it had yellow leaves and you didn't have flowers or interesting seed heads here that it could use to enhance its image recognition. Now I'll notice, I'll have you notice that I covered up the sign that was there with a little text box so, so the app wouldn't be able to cheat. This was a tough one for the apps. I naturalist thought this was an elm tree. Plant Net thought this was an angelica. Plant Snap thought this was a, a species of dogwood. Only picture this was able to identify it to genus, and it received half a point for that. Now, going to more of the, the annual flowers that you would see, this is Broalia speciosa. This is kind of an uncommon bedding plant, but it's out there. I mean, it's a great bedding plant for shady situations. And both plant net and picture this were able to identify it um, down to the species. All right, so I threw a little bit of a curveball here. This is Baptisia American Goldfinch. So I looked up the patent for this to determine the parentage on this. So you'll notice that in the name, there is no specific epithet. And that's because this is a cross between species. The mother plant is a cross between Baptisia sphericarpa and Baptisia alba. And then the father plant, which provided the pollen for the cross, is fully Baptisia sphericarpa. So three quarters of the genetic material would be that particular species. So before I started this, I determined that I would give a full point um, if, if the app was able to identify Baptisia sphericarpa. And we did have two. So we're starting to see a little bit of a trend here that plant net and picture this. We're able to identify it to the species level. And I naturalist got down to a subfamily, so it knew it was in the, the bean and pea family, but it suggested a yellow sweet clover. So that this is definitely not yellow sweet clover, folks. Next up is Symphiotrichum oblongifolium October skies. I chose this photo because uh, my photo is not great. So I wanted to kind of simulate, you know, a picture from afar. There are over, there are about 100 species of Symphiotrichum. Symphiotrichum en encompasses some of the aster plants. So I wanted to use this photo because I figured there were people out there that would take a photo from a distance where you wouldn't have close-ups of the flower or close-ups of the leaves. And surprisingly, PlantNet and Picture This did really well. They got it down to the species level. 
iNaturalist knew that this was uh, an aster of some form, but Plant, Net, and Seek didn't do so well. Interestingly, picture this had even more information. It listed some of the popular cultivars, including October Skies. So that was, that was good to note that that particular app um, had, had cultivars, although it doesn't identify down to the cultivar level. So making it a little more difficult, I wanted to try some sedges and some grasses. So I studied Carex radiata and Carex pennsylvanica when I was uh, working on my master's degree. And these were tough plants to identify. There are about 175 different Carex species in Minnesota. Minnesota seems to be the epicenter of, of diversity for Carex species. So I was like, oh, none of the apps will get this one. Um, because I would spend a lot of time looking at the seeds. I, the seeds for Carex are called perigenia. So I'd spend a lot of time looking at the seeds under microscopes, trying to get it down to species. Well, I'll tell you, plant net and picture this, nailed it. All right, so we have grasses, and this one is Miscanthus purpurescens, red flame grass, very popular here in North Dakota, and it's popular because of its fall coloration. This was a tough one. I wanted to include this because the photo is backlit by the sun, so it makes it a little bit harder to see. So I wanted to give a challenge here. Also, it's experiencing some fall coloration. And then the third challenge is once again, this plant is a hybrid between two species. It's a cross between Miscanthus sacrifloris and Miscanthus sinensis. Um, so I predetermined before I tested the apps that I would give, I would give the apps a full point if they, they identified either, either of the parent species. So um, plant net, plant snap, and picture this identified a Miscanthus sinensis. iNaturalist identified it or gave a suggestion that it was Miscanthus sacrifloris. So all four of those got points for this. And then Seek um, suggested that this was big blue stem, which is erroneous. So this is probably the toughest picture that I threw at the app. This is prairie drop seed. We, we don't have any seed heads at this early stage. It's just a clump of grass. So I wanted to see what it could do at it. I honestly thought none of them would get it. iNaturalist said it wasn't confident, but it did suggest Sprobolus heterolepis, which is prairie drop seed, and then picture this, identified it. So both of them got points. I wanted to try a shrub. This is staghorn sumac, and but it's not like the species. This is a plant that's either been bred or it's been selected because it has dissected leaves, which are not typical for the species. And you can see we got all sorts of answers for this. iNaturalist said it wasn't confident, and its top suggestion was this is common ragweed. Folks, this is not common ragweed. Um, Plant Net came up with a species I'd never heard of. Plant Snap thought this was a lady fern. Um, only picture this identified this as Rus typhina. So you can see there's, there's kind of a, a wide variety. Some of the apps are good with some things and some of the apps are better with others. How about uh, an invasive, in fact, a noxious weed? So common buckthorn is a noxious weed in Minnesota, and I know it's spreading in Minnesota. This is kind of a, a different type of picture because it was just a branch that was cut off and brought to an extension agent's office. Here we can see that it's kind of a messy sample. We've got rust on it. If you look closely at the stem, you can see we've got soybean aphids on it. So, I mean, this is kind of a nasty looking plant here. But even so, four of the five apps identified it as common buckthorn. What about for berries? Extension offices get loads and loads of questions asking for plant ID of shrubs that have berries because people want to know, can I make jam with this? Or is this going to kill me? Is this poisonous? So we get lots of questions like that. Uh, so I happen to have photos of three different um, berry plants on my on my um, photo library. So here I'm using Hascap, uh, which is Lanisra cerulea. And um, once again, 
We've got three, three of the apps identified it to species, plant snaps, said Lonicera japonica, and seek only had the genus. Um, so pretty good there. I wanted to do a native berry. This is Saskatoon service berry. This is native to North Dakota and absolutely beloved by um, various Native American tribes throughout North Dakota. And boy, oh boy, does it make a good pie. So this was probably a little bit too easy. All five of the apps um, did in fact identify this to species. But however, the, notice this is a good picture. We've got We've got a nice photo of the leaves so the app can see the leaf shape and, and we've got some very distinctive berries that are showing up here. Here you can see that, um, here, let me get my laser pointer. You can see that it's got this distinctive end where the sepals used to be suggesting it's in the Rosaceae family. All right, since, since that previous photo was too easy, I thought I would go with black chokeberry having immature berries that were green and hard. Um, so this knocked back the success of it. Plant net and picture this. Um, we're able, um, so plant net, picture this, and seek were the only three that were able to identify black chokeberry. So right, one final one before we tabulate the results. This is mosaic plant. And, and this really is way out in left field. This is a plant native to Brazil. It's an aquatic plant. So can it identify an aquatic plant? Um, and, and furthermore, this is a plant that only will only live in water that is 72 degrees or higher. So it's definitely kind of a, a unique plant. Well, um, we were able to get two, two of the apps to identify it to species. The iNaturalist that came in, um, and then you'll notice that I've had all these asterisks at the bottom. So I looked at iNaturalist's uh, top suggestions, and, and when the top suggestions were right, I gave them points. And plant net also identified it down to species. Now picture this, which was doing so well, thought this was a water chestnut. Now there's some similarity to water chestnut, but, but still it's wrong. All right, so let's tally this up. I showed you 15, 15 of the trials. I actually had 17 of them. And picture this came in first. They got 14 out of 17 right, or 82%. Coming in a close second was Plant Net, had 13 out of 17 right, 76.5%. The remaining apps had fewer than 50% of their answers right, and Plant Snap had fewer than one quarter right. All right, so some tips from, from my weekend experiment here. Accuracy of the identification depends upon the quality of the photo. So make sure that when you're doing this, that you, you are you know, taking a good photo. Furthermore, it's in good lighting. That seems to really help it a lot. One thing I didn't try here is maybe take more than one photo. So take a picture of the whole plant. Maybe do a close-up of the leaf, a close-up of the flower, close-up if they have a seed head on it, and then, and, then, and then compare the results there. You might actually find you get a little bit more accurate um, result from that effect. Um, considering that none of the apps were 100% accurate, I think it's helpful to have more than one app on your cell phone to do a cross check. Okay, so, so maybe you can get into the ballpark um, and then see, see if a, another app agrees. However, don't rely on the app to determine if a plant has edible berries. I mean, considering that we're not at 100% accuracy here, I would hate for somebody to have to go to the hospital and have their stomach pumped because they ate something that was toxic. Um, so in, in that situation, we would suggest, you know, consulting with an expert or maybe consulting a suite of characteristics. You know, say, for example, you actually cut into the berry and see how many seeds are there. You know, are there sepals on the bottom um, uh, of the fruit or how is the fruit attached to the plant? So in that, it, it's good to actually uh, to, to do a further confirmation using a suite of characteristics that we know is true of the plant that you hope that it is. So other observations I made, seek was hard to use for me. But I'm wondering if that had to do with the fact that my cell phone is ancient. You know, 
an iPhone 8. I think they've got iPhone 14s that are out now. Now, I have to admit, I've got an old phone because I'm, I'm at the stage where I'm saving up for money to send my kid to college. So maybe some of you that your kids are already through college, you've got a nicer cell phone, maybe Seek will work better for you. I know Seek is actually built into the iPhone picture app um, on some of the newer phones. And then finally, one thing I noticed um, is that Picture This has 360 Identify. So I think this means that you can use Picture This to try and get more of a panoramic effect or to try and actually circle around the plant. So I'm anxious to try that on a plant this summer and see if, in fact, that improves the accuracy of that app. So just a couple more slides here before I take questions. If you want to verify um, whether your, your iPhone or whether your, your self, uh, cell phone apps are accurate, you, know, you can certainly go to websites. I'm just going to show you my favorite website. It's Minnesota Wildflowers. Um, this is best if you're trying to identify native plants, wildflowers, plants you find in the ditch, you know, or weeds. So it's, it's really good. If you have if you've got it down to a genus or a species on your cell phone, you can just pop it into the plant name box, which is up here, and see if it matches. So Minnesota Wildflowers has photos. If you click on the photos, you'll, you'll get them to blow up, and you'll see if they've got the same characteristics um, as what showed up on your, uh, on your cell phone. Furthermore, they have a nice search function. Um, so if, if you're not a fan of using a cell phone app, but would rather do something like this, you could type in characteristics. Okay, you're looking at a wildflower. What's the color? Maybe you can identify the flower shape. Maybe put in the leaf attachment. Are the leaves attached where the, the leaves are opposite from one another? Or do the leaves, um, are the leaves alternating down the stem? You know, so put in some of these characteristics, put in the bloom season and see if you can come up with, um, with the right plant. So hopefully here, um, I've given you some tips here that you can start identifying plants without having to take a full semester long class from me and without having to learn a bunch of vocabulary. It seems like things have really improved over the last five years. Okay, yes, sir, that's good. And I agree that Minnesota wildflower site is great. It's very thorough and it's from Minnesota. So that's, we have very similar plants. Okay, uh, we invite people's questions here. You know, Esther, you mentioned that one uh, was very hard to use. Picture this, was that the hard one? No, picture this was the Seek most was accurate. Hard. Seek was the hard one. It just had a hard time focusing. It was glitchy. I had to shut down my phone. But I don't know. I can't say for certain that was my experience, but maybe some of you have had a better experience with it. Which one had the best experience? Which one was the most user friendly? Picture this. It was it was just so easy. It was just point and and photograph. Now, keep in mind, I was photographing uh, pictures that were on my computer screen is what I was doing. And it was just easy and just popped up. I didn't have to do a lot. So I like that. I really liked it. I didn't have to, to get too professional with it. And that's a free one. Totally free. So that looks promising. And the one plant net costed money, right? Plant nope, net. Plant net. Well, Which it, one costed money? Um, or you had it a was login? plant snap. I think, plant I snap. think it was plant snap. And okay. It didn't, doesn't look like it's a good deal here. That one didn't look like a good deal. I'm going to cancel my subscription before <laughs> a, it kicks in. <laughs> oh, you get a trial version. I got a trial version for seven days. There I'm going to go. cancel that one. Smart. Well, I, people are commenting about Google Lens. And this person used Google Lens for uh, 10 plants and they, they got 80% accuracy. Have you ever heard of Google Lens or tested that? I haven't tested it for plants. I think Google has has some feature. I know we were using it for my mother-in-law's china and dishes that we're going to be selling at a garage sale. So I think I think that there are some good things that are going on through Google, but I didn't have a chance to test that. Okay. This person did the paid version of Picture This for two years and they love it. Mm -hmm. The only thing they've got an issue with is telling the difference between a philodendron and a pothos. <laughs> How about that? Details, details. That's right. Um, another person has comments 
uh, comparing or discussing plant snap and picture, uh, your research mirrors their experience. Um, and so it's not just your iPhone 8, it's, 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 it goes for other phones too. Um, how about, uh, have you ever thought about doing or using bug identification apps? Or maybe you and Jan should work on one of those. Make well, iNaturalist, iNaturalist does that. Okay, all right. And in uh, fact, we're doing, I think, a bumblebee count through iNaturalist, which is kind of a citizen science opportunity for our master gardeners, or actually for anybody. Okay, you got another comment here that picture this will only work free for a while and then it costs $29.99. And they say picture this is the best app for identification. Michigan State Uni University has researched the apps and picture this has won four years in a row. So there you I, go. I'm not sure I paid. That's the only app that I had. I had heard about picture this last fall and downloaded it. And I know I don't think I've ever had to pay for it. Oh, how long have you had it? So that's the only app that I had prior to this weekend. I got that when I think I downloaded it last August or September because that's when I heard about it. Okay. And I'm cheap. Yeah, I'm cheap. So I'm pretty sure I didn't pay for it. <laughs> um, there's also an app called the Minnesota Wildflower Search. And it looks just like their website. And what else we got here? Well, what do you think about that? The first one, the bee balm, I thought was interesting that they thought was marijuana. Was that that California-based website? That's I th <laughs> It was the California-based website. That makes a lot of sense. I have to admit, I did test all the plants on hemp. So Harleen's doing research on hemp. So I have a photo on hemp and every one of them were, was able to identify it. So <laughs> That's got to be the most popular one. It's got to be. Popular submitted photo, I would guess. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, this person just tried to download picture this, and there is a premium plan. Yep. The cost. Um, it, and then another comment says, if the user goes to the upper left-hand corner and hits restore, then you can still use the app without paying. And this person, this agent's been doing it for years. Another cheap person. I and like it. Does anybody have any other comments or questions about these apps? Okay, I'd say I'm very uh, surprised how accurate they are. Don't you have the general, you gotta be pleased. I mean, like if, if you're right 80% of the time and the, you were you were not an easy uh, tester there, you give hard tests, I gotta say. You know, no wonder you flunk some people, man. You're not an easy going teacher. You're pretty tough on these people. And, you know, water plants from Brazil and crazy grasses from Minnesota. Man, it was everything. Uh, no plants with no leaves on them. Wow. And you still get 82%. Not bad. That's not bad. I, I'm afraid we're going to be out of a job here someday. <laughs> I, know. I know. I didn't want to say that. But, but, they, but no, they, can, they may be able to identify because they, they can't give that special comment or that special expertise that only a person can provide. How about yes. do you think this? They could uh, tell the difference between poison ivy and poison oak. Oh, sure. Oh, I think yeah, I think so. Can can you use pl these plant apps for weeds to identify a weed? Oh yes, oh yes, okay, absolutely. That'd be Pretty much, so if you can tell a broad leaf from a grass, you're halfway there. I think with weed control. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's for all good comments. Wow, we learned about some modern technology that was useful. That's very good. So thank you, Esther, for that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take, uh, let's take about a five-minute break now. But I, uh, let's also, Jan had it, wanted to answer a question about uh, going back to the monarchs. And like somebody had a question about, like you mentioned, sooty black mold. And so I don't know if, Jan, if you're still there or you left. You were here till just now. Yeah, she left. It looks like. Oh, well, maybe you can answer this, Esther. Since, <laughs> okay. You know, I, you're better than a plant identification app. You know, I'd rather I'd rather trust you than that app. But it's uh, this person, you know, like they, they mentioned about sooty mold and aphids causing that on the, on the weeds there, on the velvet, velvet 
milkweed. No, milkweed. What's it called? Milkweed. Sorry, man. I'm, we had a lot of velvet weed in my velvet leaf in my life. Is it Cattrell? Okay. So if this person uses soapy water to kill the aphids, will that will that soapy water also harm the caterpillars and the eggs of the monarchs? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so uh, we use insecticidal soap to wash off um, the, the cuticle on soft bodied insects, such as aphids and such. Now, if you're noticing that there are no caterpillars around, um, you're okay, because this is one of those things where it has to make contact with the insect. Um, so when you spray it, you know, make sure that you're not spraying it on the caterpillars. But you know, they're, they're going to be a little bit tough. As they get older, they're going to be much tougher than an aphid. So that aphid is, is really a soft-bodied insect. Now, I would assume that the caterpillars at the very beginning might be a little sensitive to it. So I would be very careful and, and check first before you use um, insecticidal soap. But once they're bigger, just avoid them. Just, just, just try and hit the aphids instead. And I mean, there are milkweed aphids out there. And I think they're bright red. They're kind of an interesting looking mm. thing. So pretty easy to spot. And with soapy water, just target the aphids yeah. and soapy water doesn't have any residual to Correct. worry about. So just target the aphids, you'll be okay. Sounds good. Okay, Esther, time to go home so you can prepare for the blizzard. Oh, there we go. You get to have dinner. Woohoo! Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm.